I'm taking an in-depth look at this world-first cooler with a curved screen. So join me along on this ride as we put this standout cooler to the test. Hey tech people, Melvin here. I first came across this cooler at Computex in July this year. If you have been following my channel, you will know that I have reviewed quite a few CPU coolers, but none comes close to this Panorama 360 from Tri-X. I really wonder which smartass at Tri-X came up with this idea to slap a big high definition curved screen on a CPU cooler. But nothing is perfect. There's always the good and the not so good. The Panorama 360 comes in black and white. There are 240mm and 360mm variants, and you can choose between non ARGB and ARGB fans, like the one I have over here. I do not have the SGD prices for this cooler, but a Chinese shop is selling the black 360mm ARGB model at 2699 yuan, which roughly equates to 500 Sing dollars or 380 US dollars. That's quite a hefty price for 360mm AIO, which I think puts it at the same price range as the ASUS ROG Strix Ryujin. 360 or Heights Thick Q60. I can only hope that this white model is the same price or slightly more expensive than a black one because we know that most of the price goes into the R&D as well as into this curved screen. Okay, let's start with the package. I think most of the time, PC builders could just ignore the box, but I have to mention about the nice color scheme, showing off the brand's design as well as the brand's white and green colors. You may also miss this, branded tape. Wow, I'm crazy. And take a look at how you open this box. The first thing you'll notice is the fans are pre-installed on the radiator. And there's little items in the box except for the manual and a warranty card. The bulk of the accessories are found inside this section, which contains the AMD mounting brackets, retention thumb screw caps for different CPUs, radiator mounting screws for the PC case, mounting brackets for Intel CPUs, fan screws which are pre-installed onto the radiator, and the four standard mounting screws for Intel CPUs. If you have an ARGB model like I do, there are more items here, such as the adapter cable to control the fans, a control box, a mini USB to USB cable for the motherboard, and the motherboard sync cable. The Panorama 360 has a really simple white design with subtle hints of its logo on both the radiator and the three fans. The radiator is 280mm long and 30mm thick and features a high pin density. The tubes are fully braided with a good length ending at the water block. It's a bit too bad that the outlets of the tubes are not white because that would have been really cool for an all white build. These three features do contribute to the impressive cooling performance which I will show you later in the video. The 120mm rotor fan also has a similar design as the radiator, but instead of the logo in text, we see the brand logo embossed on the housing. There are no separate PWM and ARGB cables, but all of the power and data are sent through just one cable, and we just need this adapter to link all three fans together. All the ARGB is inside, and there are no lights or accents on the fans housing. You can adjust the colors in the Canali software, which I will show you later. If you are wondering, I think Tri-X is working on a magnetic model. I'm not sure when they will announce it, so we just have to wait for updates from them. Before we go on to the LCD screen, which I know most of you want to know about, I have to mention about the additional fan or impeller inside the pump. I know that it's not unusual to have an additional fan inside the pump, but I think this fan doesn't do much to cool the surrounding components or the VRMs. Perhaps it does improve the cooling efficiency, but I think it has the added job of removing the heat away from the LCD screen's motherboard. And talking about heat, this stunning cooler does really have a pretty good cooling performance. I do not have the Region 3 to compare with, but I guess I don't need one. I'm going to try to tame Ryzen CPUs with this cooler against Cooler Masters at MOS 360. Let's begin with the less hot 9600X. The room was kept at 24 degrees C, and I turned on PBO Enhancement 90 degrees to ensure that the 9600X will push harder. The two coolers did a good job to cool the 9600X, but the Tri-X has a 4 degrees C lead over the MOS 360. It is still in the early 80s with Cinebench 2024 with a Delta Max of less than 60 degrees C. We also see similar performance at Cinebench R23. The 9600X worked harder here, but we're still within the set 90 degrees C limit with the Tri-X cooling better. Okay, how about the hotter 7700X? I did not set the limit for this one, just to let it reach its max. I was really impressed that the 7700X did not reach more than 90 degrees C on average on both Cinebench R23 and 2024 with a max of only 91 degrees C, a delta of 65 to 67 degrees C, really good. In-game, 
Yes, I know Wukong may not be the best representation, but you can see that the Tri-X kept the 9600X at 47 to 48 degrees C. I ran the test at 1080p at very high settings to make it less GPU bound. Comparatively, the 9600X was 7 degrees C hotter with Cooler Masters at MOS 360. Installing this AIO is also pretty straightforward. As you don't have to work the fans and a mounting bracket for the water block, in my case, because I'm testing with AMD Ryzen CPUs, the first thing you have to do is to remove the stock mounting brackets from the AMD motherboards. Use the same screws from the AMD mounting brackets and install tri axis mounting brackets onto the CPU socket. There's no need to apply thermal paste on the CPU. Align the water block over the mounting screws and place it over the CPU. Screw the block down with the corresponding thumb screws. I will use the sticker one for AM5 CPUs. Do refer to the manual to know which correct thumb screws to use. At this juncture, if you plan to install this AIO inside a case, which most likely you would, I will recommend installing the water block without the LCD screen cover first. It will make it a lot easier to mount the pump. And if you want the tubes to be on the right, you will have to flip the orientation of the fans so that the wires will be facing the back when you top mount the radiator. However, this part may not be necessary because of the LCD screen. To get the best viewing angle for the LCD screen, you can rotate the water block so that the inlets, the black parts, are at the bottom and the tubes are on the left. You don't have to flip your fans and you can have a full unobstructed view from the front and side. Oh yes, I forgot about the wiring. If you have the non-RGB version, very simple. Just connect the fans to the CPU header on your board using the adapter and the wire from the water block to either your pump header or the CPU optional fan header on your motherboard. The LCD screen will use a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard, so do that. However, if you have this ARGB version, it is slightly more complicated. First thing you want to do is grab this control box and connect the white fan and ARGB cable to the respective ports. Next, plug in the motherboard sync and USB cables in the output on the control box. The other end of this USB cable also goes to a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. And as for the fan-ish end cable of this motherboard sync cable, according to the manual, you can put it in a CPU fan header since it is free. But because there are only two leads in the wire, your motherboard may give this CPU fan detection error. You could always use the CPU fan header for the water block and the CPU optional for the motherboard sync. But I don't think you can control the pump speed this way. So to go around that, you can go into the BIOS, look for this CPU fan setting and set the fan speed limit to ignore. With that, you can put the water block wire into the pump header and the motherboard sync into the CPU fan header. You should be able to control the fan and pump speeds and the ARGB now. And don't forget to power up the control box with two SATA power cables for your power supply. I've tried just using one, it doesn't work. That's the problem with AIOs with screens. Installing them may not be as straightforward as they seem. That said, I like the LCD enclosure. It goes on the water block easily and because there's only one wire, it's a lot less messy, a lot easier to manage the cables. I like those from MSI such as the S360 and NZXT's Kraken series. It is a snug fit and I think it's designed to direct all of the heat out in the screen motherboard area through the exhaust section with these grills. I think it's also meant to have one flow so that all the heat can be moved directly to the exhaust fan in your PC. However, I have to mention that if you still have front USB 2.0 ports on your case, you will not be able to use those ports if you were to use this cooler. If you still want to use those front USB ports, you will either have to get a splitter or an extension hub or fuse the two leads from the motherboard sync cable together with the cable from the screen. Hopefully, Tri-X can provide a splitter extension cable in the future AIOs. But with more case manufacturers phasing out front USB 2.0 ports, perhaps this is not really a big problem. It was a little great with the installation, but let's now go on to Kanali, where most of the magic happens when it happens. Hmm, what does Kanali mean? Well, it was sure a relief when I got it to work. The accompanying software does really make or break an AIO. Well, at least Kanali isn't that bad. I just had to uninstall and reinstall one time and update the firmware because the videos that I uploaded will not show the thumbnails. But that's it, everything that's supposed to be detected is detected. 
don't be an idiot like I. Don't assume that everything is not working. Watch this video because I'm going to tell you that you can actually see all the fan speeds in Kanali. You just have to make sure you look for the correct menu and you can find your fan speeds, your pump speeds and bits of the mini fan inside the water block. Make sure you have the LCD screen enclosure on the water block so that it can read the pump speed. You can adjust the fan speeds with either the smart fan mode or with fixed mode. There are four fan curves to choose from in smart fan mode or you can choose a fixed speed that you would like your fan to spin at. You can also change the colors of your fans. You have a few like customization options here like uh, what they call Saga, Steady, Steady Colors, reading the usual. They are spinning. Or you can let the motherboard control the fans via, for example, ASUS Aura Sync or MSI Mystic Light. And yes, we can finally change what you see on the screen. The easiest way is to choose from the preset videos inside Kanali. They are highly detailed and well curated to showcase the 4040p 60Hz LCD screen. That's it. If you plan to upload your own GIFs or videos, that's where it kinds of fall short. You will only be able to upload a 1080p video that's less than 500 megabytes. And it also has to be the correct aspect ratio to fit the whole screen. This is especially important if you plan to use the screen recording function. Okay, so it took me a while, but I finally figured out how all of these things work. The best way, like I mentioned, is to upload a 1080p video with less than 500 megabytes. If you'd like to use the screen recording function like I did, don't be a smart ass like me. Don't waste your time screen recording a 4K video and try to put it inside the Kanali software. For what I experienced, you either have to compress the 4K video into 1080p or screen record the 4K video then compress into 1080p and finally upload into Kanali. That just takes a lot of time and eventually the video that comes out just looks very compressed and very fuzzy which you can see over here. And this next one is more of myself being an idiot again to try to figure out how things work. I have a bunch of videos with different aspect ratios in the media library but they don't seem to be usable. It took me a while to figure out that I have to choose the correct aspect ratio in this drop down list to correspond with the ones in the media library. They are filters, so this viewer is not going to show anything until you choose the correct aspect ratio. Then you can drag the video that you want into the viewer. When all of this is done, this is where the magic truly happens. You can either display the screen in full or split screen modes. In split screen mode, you can have two separate videos or two GIFs. Wow! And you can have up to three readouts to show, for example, your CPU and GPU usage or temperatures. This works on both full and split screen mode and you can choose the location and color of these readouts. You can even enhance it with smoke or rain filters. Wow! And one more thing, this AIO is able to recognize which brand your CPU and GPU comes from. For example, if you have a Ryzen CPU, the label will show red to tell it's from AMD and likewise, if you have this 4080 over here, the label will show green to tell you it's from NVIDIA. Besides the price, I have to address the final white elephant in the room, the noise. Actually, it isn't that bad. <laughs> For myself, I wouldn't mind having a bit of a performance loss in lieu of a much quieter system. So that's why I have set the fan curves for the three fans as well as the mini fan to run at the lowest speed possible. Well, if you have the mini fan exposed, of course, it is going to be really loud. The fan spin really great and produces a lot of noise even on the lowest fan setting. Even on idle and as well as low intensive workloads such as games, I can hear the mini pump fan spinning really loud. Luckily, the triple fans don't produce that much noise. But that said, in more practical situations, I'm not sure why will you have the LCD screen not affixed on the water block pump. Of course, you want to be able to appreciate the full glory of the LCD screen. With the screen on, it's a lot more quieter because I think the LCD screen is an enclosure to contain all the noise inside the water block pump. Even on heavy loads such as Cinebench R23, it's very dampened, it's not very loud, actually pretty comfortable when you are sitting next to the AIO. There's slightly more noise from the fans, but they're still pretty comfortable, something like a higher chime, a higher whine, but you will not affect how you feel when you're performing really intensive loads such as creation. So 
So this Tri-X Panorama 360 ARGB is really an impressive, one-of-a-kind CPU cooler. With this gigantic 6.5-inch curved screen, impressive cooling performance, really easy installation, this is the cooler to beat until someone comes out with something better. Asus just announced the ROG Strix Ryujin 3 Extreme, but it is still not curved. <laughs> Tri-X, you really win this one. So that said, if you can stomach the high amount of noise and the high price, get this CPU cooler. But hey, this is just the beginning. If you have not seen it, Tri-X will launch a modular version of this cooler where you can easily change the orientation of the LCD screen. Damn, I really would like to play with that one. So if you like my review of this Panorama 360, make sure to smash the like button and also smash the subscribe button to not miss out on any awesome tech content. So thank you, bye.